Hey, it's like, what is this lady? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. This is our first Show and Tell in a bit without special guests. That's okay. We yeah, have all the special us. guests are here. Well, the special guests are here, but also we are guests. It's it's you and me, we are and guests. me we are and you guests. here at the Adafruit yeah. Factory with our payphone, which is our best friend. Uh, this is our half an hour to see what the community is up to. What are you building, making, crafting, hacking, coding, sewing, extruding? Let us know. Yes. Come by. We're here every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Got to get out of here at 7.50, so let us uh, do that so you can go into the next show. Take yeah. two, three minutes when we call on you. Meet your mic. Otherwise, we'll start with some Adafruit folks who have all sorts of things they'd like to tell you about, starting right. with Tony D. Tony D, what you got going on? Hey, Who's yeah. Uh, actually, I had a birthday recently, and it was actually this little girl, uh, my cat. She was uh, six years old uh, mm -hmm. last month. I've heard of that. I had a funny idea because, you know, on a birthday, you need birthday cake and candles. Uh, but what if you could make a virtual or a digital version of birthday candles? And I did that with Circuit Playground. So this is basically running a little sketch. This is a classic board, but eventually I'll get this on uh, the Express board. And it's just had me, uh, it's making little flickering light animations on here. But if I flick the slide switch, now it's playing the happy birthday tune, which I believe now is fair use, hopefully. So please don't sue us. Um, but like any pair of birthday or set of birthday candles, if you blow on it, it will actually go out. So I'm using the sound sensor to detect when you blow on this board. So if I blow on it, you can see half the lights just went out on it. Uh, so kind of cool. And then when you blow them all out, it'll play a little song. Good work. So yeah, fun little Good projects. Uh, in a few weeks or so, we'll probably have a guide on this. So I want to do a circuit Python version of it. Uh, we're going to push out some changes and stuff to support that. So. Uh, just a fun little hack that I put together, but basically the digital birthday candles. Fantastic. Yay. And uh, happy birthday, Carmen the Cat. Happy oh, birthday, yeah, yeah. Carmen. Of course, she runs away as soon as she's on camera. So. Yes, that's right. OK, next up, I think Scott was Scott. here. Scott. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Hi, Scott. Pretty good. I thought I'd just like get the screen share going before yeah. you actually went to me. That's a good idea. So I'm, I'm showing this uh, brand new product just came out, Gemma M0. I was like totally broadcasting lots of stuff last week about it, and it's in the store. No secret. Um, no longer a secret. It's in the store. You can grab it right now. There's 81. Well, should I refresh? 81 in stock still? Yeah. yeah. Well, people are going to okay. find out about it soon. OK. Uh, so I've been working on that. And the other thing I've been working on is this other tab, which is a uh, blinker. Yeah. I, I, made a, I gave it a blue background, which is nice. So um, it's all about uh, creating and sharing your CircuitPython libraries. It doesn't actually go into much code detail, but it talks about a lot of other super cool stuff. Uh, for example, how to write a good API, and what cookie cutter does, and how to use GitHub and get everything up there, and then how to put your docs on read the docs, which is what we've been doing. Um, we go into a little bit of detail about how to set Travis up, uh, which is a continuous integration thing. And, and I also, of course, cover what that is. Um, and then I talk about releasing your library and getting it in our, our bundle. So we've had a bundle for Adafruit libraries for a while, but I actually just created a community bundle as well. Um, so anybody who creates their libraries, even if it's not created by us, um, so maybe it's a board we don't sell, but they want a CircuitPython support anyway, uh, that's where it can go. And we can keep track of that, and people can find it and use it still. Um, so that guide's going to come out hopefully by the end of the week. So keep your eyes peeled on the learning system. All right, thank you so much, Scott, and congrats on the 1.0 release. And if someone wants to go to youtube.com slash Adafruit, you can see Scott get very giddy. Is that the word? Excited with joy as the first gemmas came off the assembly line. I think giddy is definitely giddy is the fine. word. Yeah, I think I think that's appropriate. I was I was pretty happy about it. And yeah, uh, and Lamar they're in the store. Was, they're in the store. Yeah, and Lady Ada was telling me more upcoming things that we'll have to do with Trinket and Gemma. And, Th those got me even more giddy today. So okay. I, won't, I won't scoop those yet. So giddified. Yeah. But they're exciting. Yes. Next up, uh, Colin. Hello. Hey, Colin. Hello, Colin. Hello. You can hear me. My mic is unmuted. So like, I'm using an Echo, an Amazon Echo a lot. And it has no persona. It's just like a hockey puck, the Echo Dot. So I, I decided to take one of one of our, uh, Phil, I know you like this guy, our old personas yes. that we from our youth. The only friend of the child. Friendly friend, yes, and a friendly friend. Two XL trivia bot, which took these uh, eight track tapes, and you know, which I know all the answers to all the questions now. So trivia bot, you answer the questions, blah blah blah. Anyway, now I uh, use it as a uh, proxy persona for my Amazon Echo. I 
installed an echo on the back, just yep. like Velcro tape back there. And if uh, I turned it on, you're familiar. Thank you for turning me on. Voice of the original 2XL, who's an inimitable character. But now I can say, uh, computer, are you evil? Actually, I'm here to help the world. So things like that. And it's actually, it's much more relaxing to listen to the news uh, with a voice changing effect on it. Yeah, this is probably the only way to listen to the news right now. Right, and I, and I couldn't let these these nice uh, push buttons go to waste. So we have some classic examples. <laughs> that was kind of disturbing. <laughs> but you get the idea. Yeah. Thank you for joining me, Colin. Straight up, this works better than IBM Watson. That is pretty sweet. Just saying. Yeah. It uh, adds a little, adds a little uh, life to the, to the black hockey. Team. I do like that. All right. We have some more 2XL stuff coming out soon, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Colin. Thanks for the update, Colin. Sure. Thank you. Woo. All right. JP, what you got going on, JP? Hey, uh, I just got a couple quick things going on today. One is a uh, preview of a project that I'm working on, which is a uh, RFID remote puzzle lock sort of thing that I'm going to be embedding in a chessboard and using these tiny little, they're so tiny, I just lock these tiny little micro end tag guys. And so one cool thing about these uh, 13, what are they, 0.56 megahertz RFIDs is that they can read two tags at once. So if it couldn't, it would be easy for people to sort of brute force a puzzle. The puzzle would be built around a couple of um, spaces on the board that they won't be able to see. This will be all sealed up. Since I'm using a 900 megahertz um, board, it'll be able to remotely unlock something or reveal something when the puzzle has been solved. So that's a project I'm working on right now. Uh, and there'll be a video and a learning guide coming. And then uh, the other quick thing was this may or may not be part of it, but I had, if people follow me on social media, they might have seen me today taking this old, uh, beautiful AC motor that runs at about 4 RPM. Uh, it wouldn't run, so I took it apart. Turned out that there was just sort of solidified grease tar in the gearbox. So I pulled that apart, degreased it, put some uh, white lithium grease in it, and now it runs nicely. So I was able to adapt one of our little um, timer pulleys that we use that's in like the CNC section of the Adafruit store uh, to be able to turn a pulley on a little um, uh, rail with a pillow block, kind of like the Noah and Pedro's uh, camera dolly that they built, or just use it to wind up a piece of fishing line or a thread with an object on it. So um, might be using that, might be using a linear actuator. There's, some, there's a couple of options for what the reveal would be, but this would be kind of an escape room type of thing or a stage illusion kind of thing. So that's what I'm working on. Outstanding. OK. All right, thank you much, so much, JP. And we're going to keep moving along. Phil B, what you got going on? Hi there. Um, hey, it was last week or maybe the week before, I was showing a new library on uh, works on the newer M0 boards uh, using SPI and DMA to talk to NeoPixels. Um, this way, uh, like NeoPixels, they kind of like stop your program when they're being refreshed. And this is kind of annoying if you're doing servos or whatever. Um, so anyway, we got that working and that's really cool, but that's only to one pin. And something we've been wanting to do is talk to multiple strips in parallel. Uh, there's, there's products like Fade Candy that do this, um, lets you do very large scale, very fast, um, installations, but there's a problem on these M0 chips that DMA is over here and your GPIO ports are over here. They, they don't connect, but Lamore found a way in. And so I've been working on a library. It. She hacked it. Yeah. I mean, um, work, worked on a, I'm working on a library to um, talk to a whole bunch of NeoPixels in parallel. That's nice. So uh, this is just what I had around. This is really bright and blinding. There's two layers of fabric in front of it, so we can even see it on camera. Yeah. Um, but this is 512 NeoPixels, and it can probably do about 2,000 NeoPixels. Uh, provided you can power that many. Or carry them. <laughs> yeah, but the good news is I, I have a prototype working and I'm just making it into a presentable library. And you'll be able to talk to eight NeoPixel strips in parallel 
with like zero CPU utilization. It's like super crazy efficient. So <laughs> that's what I got going. And I'm going to unplug it now because it gets really hot. <laughs> <laughs> like the sun. I have a 20 amp uh, UBEC here and it's like. I, it's for the winter. Yeah, don't touch it because you'll, you'll burn yourself. But, All right. Uh, so yeah, so the software, software is a solved problem. Battery, that's your own problem now. Yeah. All right, yep. good. Perfect right. in time for uh, for Burning Man. Last yes. Burning Man project. Oh, definitely. Yep. Okay. Don't Pedro. Hey, guys. hey everybody. Uh, this week we have a nice little game controller using the Adafruit Arcade Bonnet. So I put together this little box here, which is kind of reminiscent to like a laser cut uh, acrylic type of box. So there's like side panels. And I got a little bit uh, creative with the kind of graphics. These are done with our dual extruder on our Ultimaker 3. Uh, so I got a couple little graphics here going on. But really, uh, the, the idea of the project was just to kind of uh, wire the analog mini joystick to the arcade bonnet. So if anybody's interested in doing that, check out the guide and also how to add some extra buttons, because uh, the arcade bonnet has about six uh, JST connectors for these uh, quick connect wires. But if you want to wire more, like these two here in the front for doing like play and pause, uh, you have to manually wire them, which is fine. So you can check out the guide on how to do that. And of course, the design files are free to remix. I also have a large version, kind of like the ergonomical version that nice. we printed on our Sigma BCN 3D printer, which is about 8 by 11 inches. Um, it's like, what, 3 And do you like the soft uh, joystick compared to like the clicky type joystick? It's a different feel. It's definitely a I different like it, feel. Yeah. Um, yeah, it kind of depends on your personal taste. Uh, I did take it apart and tried to play around with the uh, the springs to see if I can get uh, you know a little bit less. It's really tight, but um, I think it's nice. I like it. Yeah, you like it. But then again, I like the brown Cherry MX keyboard. Yeah, the same not, feel. Like <laughs> we'll be showing like your videos, place. and we're catching up on some of the time lapse ones this week. Yeah, those okay. are fun. Cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. All right. We're going along. Okay. We're gonna go to uh, Michael because I think he has a young engineer in tow. So we'll hey. Go. Hey, Michael. How's Hi, it going? Hi, Michael. Hi. How's it going? Good. Hey. What's your project? Oh. Uh, just want to show off real quick. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. And powered by remote. <laughs> <laughs> the, remote, uh, the remote controls the kid. So hopefully you hear. That's great. You know, that's what we want to do with some of our future Ada boxes. It just close. Okay. It's a little bit low. Oh, so it's audio and it's got the NeoPixels in it, or what is it? Exactly. So yeah. uh, I incorporated the the circuit playground, and it's doing the DU meter right now from Tony. Uh, so inside is the music maker and it's all battery powered. And there goes the circuit maker. It's all good. Cool. You can, you can fix it. Well, you're, uh, congratulations. I think you're the first person to get it as seen on the show and tell sticker on your Ada box. So email support at adafruit.com and we'll send you an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Looks great. Thanks. All right, Michael, thank you so much. Next up, uh, stuff with Kirby. Hey, Kirby. Kirby, what's the stuff? Hey. <laughs> so I was at a garage sale or a state sale, and I picked up these old intercoms. Oh, neat. And I have all my stuff in the house work through the Amazon, the TV, and the lights and everything. So I took one apart. Or I took the remote apart, so I didn't have to do any programming. It runs on two double A's, I think, for quite a long time. Yeah. So now when I press the button on here, it'll do stuff like, I'll turn the TV off and upset the wife. Turn off TV. Oh, neat. I like the like 2001 Space Odyssey aesthetic it has, too. Yeah, and the, so the button oh, doesn't work with it. And then I removed all the stuff inside but kept the board so I had a mounting location still. That's cool. And then I just had to saw the remote apart a little bit to make it fit in there. And then on there, I could solder to the LED button to use that. And then it uses a little microphone, but it still lights up. That's cool. So now I got another remote so I can take some better pictures and make another one. 
Outstanding. The speaker is a little quiet, so I'm wondering if maybe I can wire an amp up to it in a bigger speaker and have it just power when the button's pressed in. Awesome. So I'm going to try that out. And what's the remote go to? It's the uh, Amazon wand. Oh, it's the Amazon wand. Okay. I was like, I've never seen this. Yeah. I was like, what is we this? Have, we have one. We don't. Oh, uh, okay. So it's Everything an Amazon. But the music on the Echo, which I don't really use. So okay. it works for all the home automation. That's kind of cool. I like repurposing right. the only be like Email, Jeeves. Yeah. What's Email the weather? Supported data for .com. We'll send you a sticker. And uh, this is a really good example for everyone out there. There's a million amazing enclosures that are at yard sales and estate sales. You just got to get them. Two bucks. Yeah. Exactly. Good deal. Okay. Next up, we're going to go to Matt. Hey, Matt, unmute your mic and show us your project. Hey, guys. Do you remember my uh, unwieldy smart airsoft gun? Yes. Yeah. I made a new one. It's, okay, cool. Uh, Really small now. I use a viewfind display as my monocle. This is a new Google Glass that they were talking about. And uh, I set uh, it. It now has zooming capabilities as well, ten times zoom. And um, it, it's only uh, a few parts: a uh, Pi Zero W, the infrared camera, three buttons, a Berry IMU, and a rotary encoder. And I actually have um, it set up right here to show you what I see on the monocle. Oh, wow. So it zooms in 10 times. <laughs> oh, my God. Zooms out. Um, you can um, change the pattern and the color, or you can toggle it, and you can change the color as well. Um, I'll be releasing a build guide within the next few weeks. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, Marvel Avengers movie. And email support at adafruit.com, and we'll send uh, you and your rifle a show and tell sticker. Yeah, you're you're definitely the guy I want on my side. What's the Deadshot that can always like? Yeah, there's yeah. Deadshot, and then uh, secret airsoft project that should be done by next week. Yeah. If I have it done, I'll show you guys. Okay, cool. That's great. I like that that you can zoom in. Yeah, the zoom is totally awesome. That's that's what you want to do. Enhance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, zoom command, which is the old crop command. Yeah. For the pie camera. That's super cool. Yeah, but like it's cool. I used to say like right. enhance target acquired. Next up, Joshua, show us your project. Hey, Joshua, can you hear us? Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey. He's he's just chilling out. Okay, we'll move on. It's all right. All right, Stuart. Stuart, I'm your mic. Show us your project. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I uh, worked on a fun project. Um, my wife had a St. Augustine. Hello. House wine bottle. Um, I have been working on. Uh, hey, hey, Joshua, we'll, we'll go. We'll get back to you in just one second. Okay. Just hang there. We're gonna go to Stuart, and then we're gonna go back to you, Joshua. Okay. Okay, okay. Stuart. All right, Stuart. Good morning. Okay, so my wife had a St. Augustine Lighthouse wine bottle. It was empty. So what I did was I filled it up with uh, some water and put some blue dye in it and a pencil holder with some neo pixels inside on the top here and on the top where the where the bottle candle hot holder is. I have it powered by Gemma, which is inside this old uh, watch case here with an LED. Um, it's powered by Gemma and a, a LiPo. And on the side, it had some windows here. I'm not sure if you can see them. Yeah. Those I colored uh, gold with a Sharpie that come out. But anyway, what happens is when I turn it on, it's light activated. I mean, well, when it's dark, the LEDs come on, I'll cover the hole up. And it kind of glows. Kind of glows like that. Ooh. Oh, I like the spinning uh, lighthouse mirror effect. Yeah. That's one of the things about these uh, really cool bottles that sometimes, whatever beverage comes in, you yeah. feel, it always feels weird throwing it away because it's kind of a beautiful bottle. Yeah, but it's a glowy thing. When the light comes on, it should turn off. It's a little dark in here. All right. Well, you can give it back to your wife. Yeah. And um, it gets the on your show and tell sticker that you can put at the base there. That'll totally make her love it. She'll be like, I know this is quality because it's got a yeah. show and tell sticker on it. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to Aaron and Wait. then we're going to wrap up with Josh. Adam. Don't forget Joshua. Well, uh, oh, Josh left? Yeah. He, oh, okay. He he'll be back. All right. Okay. Aaron, how's it going? Uh, good. How are you guys? Um, hey. I, uh, so I've been working on this, this little project. This is a 16 by 32 um, LED matrix. And uh, what I have, I decided I wanted to spruce up my desk at work. And so I built this little application um, 
that uh, I could type a, a message into like this. Uh, and then, um, let's see, I gotta stop screen sharing. Then when I send the message, no, he's talking make to sure that I'm seeing this. A red ghost. Yeah, it's a ghost. Uh, the ghost comes across okay. and then comes back and shares the message. Ooh. Uh, cool. nice it was just sort of a fun little thing that I wanted to put together to make my desk at work a little more interesting. Uh, so I'm working on uh, next on making the uh, ghost colors adjustable and uh, maybe adding in other sprites like a little Mario or things like that. Yeah. I'm totally going to put in a ticket and be like, please allow the ghost to be cornflower Well, it's cool. Blue. You can you can all set up when you're gone. It could be, <laughs> you could just say, I'm not here, and the little ghost has gone by. Yeah. yeah. Good ghost. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sweet ghost. Cool project. And uh, email supportedatafruit.com, and we'll send you out as seen on the show and tell sticker, and you can have the ghost say, I want to, I got a story. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Adam, welcome back. I know you're working on some stuff. I, I saw you. Well, your in, screen's in on. The chat, it's so. on. It's working. Wow. Right now. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Post up of this. Okay. Um, you can see it's going to be a bit difficult to see, but I got an IC in there right now. Oh, yeah. I see the pins. Yeah. So let's see if we can improve the image quality just a bit. Let's see. Give it some brightness. Oh, make sure current's dropping. There we go. Oh, yeah. So if I give it some contrast, I should be able to actually see the dye on this one. Oh. Enhance, enhance. Enhance. Oh, yeah. Look, I see the bonding wires. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, I'm just a bit out of focus, focal range right now, so I can't quite zoom all the way into this thing. But it's operating, and I figured out with the burning noise that I smelled right before the show and tell was an inductor that overheats after about two minutes of operation. So I can operate this thing for two minutes at a time right now. Well, okay. it's okay, but it's it's there, it's working. And we can get a big, bigger image there. Oh, wow. You can really see that. Yeah, there we go. I mean, that's. That's operation, and that's my two minutes. So we're gonna shut the mission current down and shut operation down. Okay. <laughs> but um, I know what the problem is now, and it's operating. I have proper power in my shop. I have a proper electron microscope, so things are getting really, really exciting, really, really quickly. So yeah. So, um, so you dug that trench and ran the power, and that that fixed the power thing. Yeah, yeah. So I ran um, uh, four eight gauge wires to my shop. So I have forty amps, two twenty in here. So effectively eighty amps, one twenty available. Um, which will give me power from microscope. Then pretty soon I'm going to be getting a lathe to start uh, making, or I'm still shopping for the lathe, but get a lathe to um, start making additional parts for this, and then also build a deposition chamber so I can uh, sample non-conductive images. Because if you're sampling something non-conductive with electrons, well, you got to make them conductive somehow. So you evaporate a layer of something on it, usually gold, and I have most of the parts for this chamber, but I'm going to need to machine look at a few parts for that. So once I get that, I'll have plenty of power to run that and my microscope and any other projects that come along. This so. is happening. And this is happening. This is right happening. Now. This is successful. <laughs> how, how much magnification can you, can you get? Like, how small can you get? So the dial says uh, 200,000. Um, and the manual says 7 Anstrom's maximum resolution. I don't think I'm going to be there immediately. I know I have some signal issues with this microscope. But yeah. theoretically, it'll be able to push it to that extent soon. Okay, that's exciting. We're totally going to send you some stuff, like some yeah, wafers. I think I'm can... just going to make a um, scanning microscope badge. I think I'm just going to like hand just stitch. Just one. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, like it. hand stitch, and you'll yeah. be the only one who gets it. It'll just be, it'll just be a, a picture of you and that. Is so I'm so excited. So two months ago. So next time, you're, next you're going to just uh, find the inductor, replace it, or cool it. Yeah, uh, the inductor is an interesting one to replace. It's very specifically tuned. Um, basically, this thing operates a flyback transformer at a weird frequency. So to get the fuel collapse and the uh, energy correct, it, uh, you have to get this weird inductor in there. And I don't know how I'm going to replace it quite yet, because I haven't found something that matches the specs or even remotely close to matching the specs. So we'll see. Yeah. But Outstanding. I wonder if it has the same exact microscope, and his inductor overheats all the time. And he says it's fine. So. You could try is there a social it. network for people who have these? Two. We there we were starting one eventually. It's SEMnet. There's only there's only three people. It might just be called telephone for right now because you can only just call one person. I know. I, about mean, five I just cool it off. I mean, like who cares? Just like put a fan in there or uh, like. I'll actually show it to you. It's um. Uh, you can't yeah. really see it that well. Um, it's this component right there, and it's it like yeah. that. It's exactly like that one except buried in the very back. So getting airflow back there is a bit difficult. So. I mean, as you can't, you, as, yeah, I guess you can't really see it because it's just down deep in the darkness, but okay. I know what the problem is, and theoretically, I should be able to fix it. So. Right. Well, we'll see you um, next week. And once you get going, maybe um, 
throw a NeoPixel under there or something like that. That'll be a fun thing. We also have um, the um, the thermo the thermo uh, what's it called? Oh, I forgot the word. But the um, you know we have those um, piezo esque uh, coolers that you could the discs you could just strap it on. Oh yeah 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 that might work really well. Not piezo. Yeah. I don't remember the name of it. But it's the thing is though is that anything if I have to image a IC I have to decap it. So to image a NeoPixel I got to take that clear epoxy off. Yeah, yeah 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 that's fine. And I don't I don't have that kind of setup yet. I know a couple of people online do, and I'm going to try to get there eventually. But that's some caustic chemicals and. Yeah, I can work in a lab with those, but I don't really want to work in my garage with those yet. You can um, you can just get wafers off of like eBay for like five bucks a piece, and those then just fun. crack them into you know just crack them and start looking because that'll get yeah, you like yeah. you'll be able to really tell yeah. what resolution you're doing. I, I have some microscope footage that I've been doing. I'm going to email the RISC five people who have like this new chip. I'm going to ask to get a wafer. So if I can get two, I'll send you out one. Yeah, no, that'd be yeah, no. Anything you guys want to send me that's conductive, I I will put it in this microscope and image for you. Yeah. Okay, so. just coat the cat in gold. Yeah. Does it conduct? <laughs> Does it conduct? We'll find out. Okay. All right, sweet. All right. Just well, in thank time. you, everybody. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Michael, and the assistant engineer. I think Colin. Thank you, Adam. Congratulations again, Adam. And thank you, Aaron. We're here every single week. Thank you so much for making this most exciting twenty-something minutes of our lives every single week. Next week, show and tell, seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. Ask an engineer starts in four minutes. Bye bye. Bye.